I'm John Rogers from Cuyahoga Falls, and today we're going to look at a, a, an area very close to us, the Niagara area. I call it Erie to Ontario, and everything that you will see today will be within a roughly five hours of you, so there's no excuse for not getting up there to see it. Now I'm going to show you some maps here to give you an idea. This is a 3D map that I have. Now this is Lake Ontario, the upper part. You don't see Lake Erie on it, but this is the Welland Canal coming through here. There are eight locks to the Welland Canal from Ontario to Lake Erie. And this is the river. And the river, actually the river is running this way because it's running from Lake Erie, which is much higher than Ontario. Here are the falls areas through here. This is the Whirlpool, and then it goes on out, and Old Fort Niagara is over here, and Niagara on the lake is over on the Canadian side. Beautiful little city. You'll see some of it uh, shortly. Now, out here, this is Lake Ontario. That is Toronto across the lake. This is the old Fort Niagara. See, this is New York State over here. This is all Ontario in Canada. And here is the river. Now, the river is running this way towards Ontario. And we, we will be going all across here. We'll actually start at the Welland Canal and come over, and I'll show you some vineyards and so forth as we make our way across. And then... <coughs> Here is Toronto over here, and here is the Welland Canal, because that's what we're going to start with. And here is Lake Erie. Right in there, if you could see them clearly, you would count eight separate locks that a ship must come th go through to either go down to Lake Ontario or come up to Lake Erie. So we're going to talk first about the Welland Canal. But I like these two pictures just west of the canal, so I put them in. This is just west of Lock 1 on the uh, canal. And then I thought this rowing statue at, uh, at St. Catharines, depicted as the spirit of St. Catharines. Rowing is a big deal up in that, that country, and that's, what it, uh, <laughs> that's how they depict it. And then just to temper... Uh, or to tempt you a little bit, I thought I'd show one picture of one of the waterfalls, and then we will get to it later in the program. And this is the American Falls. And to the Welland Canal. I'm right at Lock 1 on the Welland Canal, looking out to Lake Ontario. And lock number one, I've, t I've turned now, and lock number one is wide open, wait waiting for a ship to come through, uh, to come in. And here are some uh, Canada geese. We, we have those around here too, but up there, they're really Canada geese. And as I was getting ready to leave and giving up on it, here comes an ore ship in from Lake Ontario. And uh, we will bring it on in as the geese wait there. I don't know if those people feed the geese or not, but um, they stand there along and wait for the ship to come just like I'm doing. Now this one's coming in empty. It's, or it's coming in from Ontario, and it is going to be lifted up to Lake Erie. So it's making it swing around. I'll go north. Uh, and um, <coughs> they got so close that I was able to talk to some of the people uh, that work on the ship. And here it is. It will make a swing now to our left and then go into lock one. And it's almost in lock one. And we will, we will zip up this little road to the right and cross the bridge uh, just before it is uh, finished. Now, this, um, we have gone on out now. This is to another lock. I think this is lock number three. And uh, this uh, ship that's uh, coming in is going from Lake Ontario up to uh, Lake Erie. And this bridge that you see in the background, 
That is the Queen Elizabeth Way. That's one of the major highways going through this part of the Niagara area. Uh, the, the, um, the ship is coming on, and a lot of these uh, bo um, ships carry ore and that type of thing. Now here at Lock 3, they actually have constructed sort of a gang, uh, sort of a, uh, a stadium, you might say, um, stadium seats anyhow, for you to sit in and watch these ships come through. And the Queen Elizabeth way in the, in the back. Now it's almost in, and it, they will be closing uh, the gates. These are the gates here, and then filling up with water and bringing the, uh, the barge up. Okay, they can close now. It's, uh, it's all uh, in. And they have done that, and the ship is almost up to the next level, and the gates in front of it now will be opening as it makes its way to Lake Erie. This is, uh, it's already gone through two, this is the third. Uh, and the gate at the back is holding the water and, hold, and thus holding the ship up for it to go forward when the other gates are open, and that it is doing now. I go into this a little bit because a lot of people have never seen a ship go through a lock, and it's an interesting process, and uh, <laughs> uses lots of water, but it's an interesting process. Now this one uh, is a different ship, and it is coming in from Lake Erie. We won't spend that much time with it, but it uh, makes its way on into the lock. And then the gates at the back of it are closed, and the gates in front will open, and then it will settle down to go to Lake Ontario. And it's on its way down now. There's still a, bit, a good bit of water in the lock. It's just beginning its uh, descent. And there you can see we're looking towards Ontario. Now, the gates are still, still there. <clears throat> They've got to let the water out before they can open those gates. And this is that Queen Elizabeth Way again. You can see it has dropped down. All the water has let, been let out. And the gates will open shortly. And it will go, make its move on towards... Um, Lake Ontario. The gates are opening now. This is all done in, in stages, and some, sometimes it seems like it's taken a lot of time, but really not that much for what it's actually doing. And you can see how it's way down in the lock, but ready to go out now. See, all these, all these bins here, all of those, and this one, since it's going out, are full of ore. Quite often it will be iron ore, maybe from over Minas in Minnesota, and it's already come through the, the Great Lakes. Quite a change, isn't it, <laughs> from uh, ore board <laughs> to uh, grapes. But this is the, this northern part of the Niagara area, indeed the whole thing, but, but especially the northern part, has a lot of grapes uh, raised, vineyards all over the place, and wineries uh, there. This winery is the Pella State Winery, and uh, I was with a group, uh, we were with a group that had lunch uh, here with wine tasting on one of the trips that we have made into the Niagara area. We've been up with groups to uh, see the, the plays over at um, Niagara on the lake and, um, and then uh, have gone out to the wineries and what a beautiful job they do with flowers around the place. But I just love these, uh, these grapes hanging on the vines ready, ready for picking. And here's the way the, the grape vines look. They're, they're uh, are pruned so that they grow up, and then they are, uh, have stakes and wires to hold them, hold them up. You've got to keep those grapes off the ground. Uh, they won't be any good at all. 
And there at the, uh, at the Pella um, Estates Winery, we actually saw the, um, uh, where they store. And these are, these are the kegs. And they actually um, looked at, we looked at one keg very closely. And then they showed us um, with a diagram and with actual exactly how the kegs are put together. They're usually oak uh, kegs. Beautiful grapes, beautiful. And one more shot of uh, a few uh, out, out in the field. Other people were inside eating while I was out wandering around taking grape pictures. And here's the front of the, uh, of the Pella Estate Winery. And a few last flowers before we look at another little map. Now here's another one from that same 3D map. This is Lake Ontario. This is uh, this little area down in, in here is Niagara on the lake, which we're going into. This is Old Fort Niagara, and this is New York State. This is the Niagara River flowing out this way. So we will go here first, and then we'll go to Old Fort George uh, here, and then we will keep coming this way on um, the Canadian side of the river. This is the pe a picture across from Niagara on the lake to Old Fort Niagara. Uh, see, this fort is very interesting, and we'll be going into it almost at the last. It goes all the way back to here. This part, especially, uh, because it was a French fort, a British fort, a U.S. fort, and then it was retaken by the British, and now it is uh, U.S., of course, in New York State. Uh, but you can get good views. You get your best, best views of it from the Canadian side at Niagara on the lake. And in Niagara on the lake, um, uh, we're right downtown now with uh, that tower sort of a symbol uh, in the middle of the town. And this is George Bernard Shaw, uh, uh, a statue of him right on Main Street. See, the Shaw Festival of uh, plays, it lasts for eight months each year with 11 different plays being shown at different times. And their count at that time was about 350,000 people a year come to Niagara on the lake to see those um, plays. And uh, usually on the times we have been up there, the two times we've been up there, we have seen at least three uh, plays each, uh, each time. They're not all Shaw plays, they're different uh, playwrights. But all of this will be right along Main Street. Just a, a, a real beautiful uh, flowerland uh, type uh, place. Really quite, quite neat. And here is one of the uh, theaters where, where we have seen plays right on Main Street. Indeed, um, we'll get it to the Prince of Wales Hotel in a moment, and some of the places are within walking distance. You don't even have to ride the bus to them. Tuberous begonias, a lot of them in uh, Niagara on the lake. And this is the Prince of Wales Hotel. It tends to be a little on the expensive side, but it's really pretty good, and it's uh, right downtown. Uh, so that you can walk. You can see the horse carriages, so yes, you can get a, a ride around, uh, around the town. And here's the side of the Prince of Wales Hotel. And this, this is that other side, this is the side street. Uh, the other one was along Main Street. And here's a close-up of one of the carriages Pretty, pretty nice horses they have, too, and they really treat them nice. Inside the hotel, I just, a um, little hard to photograph, but I took a few pictures of, of different things in, inside. Um, these two, at least, came out pretty good. 
And then I have you back outside again, walking on Main Street. Our friend, the tuberous begonia again. And this is chestnut. This is, uh, um, it's not the American chestnut. That has become extinct. This is probably Chinese chestnut. L uh, about every uh, lamppost has at least one or two hanging baskets off of it. And their hanging baskets are really long and full of flowers. And occasionally you see a little church steeple uh, peeping through. But I, I go immediately back to the, um, to the flower beds. Really outstanding flowers. There's another nice tuberous begonia. And you saw the towel when we first got into the town. So here's the towel with some of those hanging baskets off of the flower post. You can walk all up and down the, uh, the main street. There are all kinds of little shops selling all numerous different things. Uh, this is a library information uh, center. And this is a bed and breakfast. You can actually stay in the town of Niagara on the lake if you arrange it ahead of time. And now these are not necessarily bed and breakfast, but look at the way they do the flowers. Just magnificent. Something out of the cabbage family in this window box. And not far from the Prince of Wales uh, Museum, uh, I mean uh, hotel, is the statue of John Graves Simcoe. Simcoe was the first lieutenant governor of Upper Canada, and that's why his statue uh, is on the little park uh, there. Uh, these are New England asters uh, growing here. And now we're going to move on into Fort George. This is not my picture, I have not been in the air over there, but uh, this, this is the outline, notice, notice the uh, confines of the fort. We enter it over in this air area, and um, we will be going to a number of these buildings as we go through. Fort George helped keep Canada out of American hands during the War of 1812. And that's exactly what it did. There were artillery duels between Fort George and that American Fort Niagara during the War of 1812. And here's a guard that you have to go, go by to get in. Yes, it costs you money to uh, get into um, uh, Fort George. But you can take your time and walk all around, and they give you all um, a lots of information and demonstrations of various things. That was still outside, and now we are um, inside of the fort. From one vantage point I got, I, I was able to photograph the Niagara River with a marina on the Canadian side and part of Old Fort Niagara on the uh, American side. And there's the British flag over the fort. Actually, there were several British flags over the fort. Here's what, one of the places that they call a redoubt. And this is, is lined with uh, cannons to fire at the United States, of all things. And my wife is walking uh, ahead of me, and we're going into one of the blockhouses. This is where the men would stay. This would uh, be an officer's quarter. The men didn't have quite that uh, neat a uh, setup. And a few of the old cannons that they have brought inside to keep from weathering too badly. And here are some of the bunks that the men uh, slept in. The dining hall. 
when I was in the Navy, we never used the word dining. It was always chow. So that would have been a chow hall. And there were various little homes, little cottages, they called them. This is the only one that is still standing, but they were within the fort, and a family could actually live in them. And I told you, you'd see different uh, buildings there. Some of these, this one on the, on the right, you could go in and buy certain uh, items. And then we're on our way now to uh, see a demonstration of a soldier firing a musket. Uh, we got a little ways to go. There's the British flag again. Now he will be back in this, uh, in this area of the fort. Oh, here he is now. And he's lo loading his musket. This is one shot at a time. You have to put the powder in and so forth. Uh, and uh, he, uh, he fired it. He tried the first time and it failed. Uh, this, and, and that's what this picture of. And then after he whipped it around so fast, he fired again, and I did not get his picture, but it looked pretty much just like that. Now we're heading, we're heading to the south towards Lake Erie, and this is the Lewiston-Quinston Bridge. Uh, there will be four bridges as we make our way there um, across the Niagara River. Uh, this is still Canada, but I got into position where I could photograph that bridge. And this is the, uh, some people call it the Brock Monument or the Tower, or the Brock Tower. Now this Brock is Major General Sir Isaac Brock. Uh, he was killed October the 13th, 1812. Uh, 1812. Uh, in the uh, War of 1812, he was commander in chief of Fort George. And don't don't give him too rave a no notice because he was fighting the United States. And this is an, a nice uh, place where you can walk right on up uh, to the stature uh, from there. But on the way, you get these beautiful views of the Niagara River uh, flowing past you, and this. Uh, you cannot read the words on it, but this is a monument to Laura Secor. And Laura Secor saved her husband, in, who was in battle during the War of 1812. And I like the fact that they put up a monument to, to her for that action. And then two of the, the Brock Tower itself under pretty good, uh, pretty nice uh, lighting, really very um, effective. Now we're going on a little, little bit more. See, um, Niagara, this is Ontario, Niagara on the lake is over here. There's that Brock Tower. This is the, the Lewiston, um, uh, Lewiston Queenston Bridge here. And then we will come around this way. Here is the Whirlpool. Now, when you're seeing the things on the Whirlpool, it's all in Canada because this is the U.S. side, and we come down this, this way, and we will, we will uh, go, um, and I'll tell you some more about those bridges as we go. But here's, here's three of the bridges right here. After you uh, make that swing, the first thing you come to is the floral clock. And uh, this is a, a real beautiful clock. It's not the first one in the world or anything like that. I understand that one is in Edinburgh, Scotland, which I have seen and photographed, as a matter of fact. But uh, this one is just really compelling. It really is neat. Now, remember, <coughs> Electricity. I can't keep all the wires out of these pictures. I try, but it doesn't happen. Um, you are seeing this uh, world, this uh, floral clock. It's several different seasons and several different trips. Uh, I combined them all. This is the back of it uh, here. But it is so fantastic that I like to uh, show a few pictures of it. I think. I, my notes show that I have 13 pictures of the floral clock, but they're not all of the clock. 
a lot of them are the beautiful flowers that they have around the clock and the ponds and just uh, just neat stuff. Now we're coming back around to the front now and you can see the face of it again with some of the electrical installations in the back. This, um, this uh, thing up on the pole, that's not really a pole, it is um, a uh, tree fuchsia. Um, right pretty plant. And now we move on. I just had to put in a couple of pictures of the electrical installations because a lot of Niagara is wrapped around generating electricity. And so these things are all there also. A um, lot of beauty, but a lot of utility as well. And then we're coming on down and the next stop that we will make is the horticultural school gardens or grounds um, and they're, qu they're quite pretty you ought to save at least uh, half an hour or so to stroll around these areas this is a, the, the most formal part of it everything else uh, tends to uh, to be a little on the informal side so you're looking at the real formal stuff Quite a, quite a school up there. You can go to school to learn how to be a gardener and be hired on that basis in, uh, in Canada anyhow. These are, are rose, rose gardens. Pretty, pretty stuff and displayed just wonderful. And they, they, keep, uh, they keep the cars sort of away. They're in a, a parking lot, but not too close to the garden itself. Now I'm looking towards Lake Erie and off to the right where this band is, off to the right behind that ridge is what is known as the Whirlpool, or the Whirlpool Rapids. And we are right there, and it's off to our left now. And uh, it, it, it's sort of treacherous, you might say. Off to the left there, you can see, see all the currents moving. And they really move. And here is a car that you can go over in. This is the Niagara Spanish Aerial Car. And remember, all of this will be within Canada. Now, I do have one picture from the American side. But what you will do is get in this car and go over to that cliff there, to that actual opening up there. But you will stay on the car and you will come back over. Now I'm over at that point with a long uh, lens, uh, up, up higher than it, and taking this picture as the car starts down. And boy, all you, all you got is eight cables to hold you, and you're underway. And uh, the, the river is flowing this way, and the Whirlpool Rapids are up in this area. The, see, the river comes around and is more or less over there, and you will be going over to that place. <laughs> you can see the Whirlpool down below. And if you couldn't see it there, you can sure see the currents and rapids and everything else in the water movement down, down below you. Uh, now, I'm over on the American side at this point, taking a picture of the fragile little um, aero car going with people on it over to, uh, to there. That's uh, just, just fantastic, this area. Uh, this is the bank opposite the, uh, this is the bank on the American side opposite the Whirlpool Rapid. There's even some green and a waterfall and so forth as it uh, comes down uh, through there. 
just a fantastic uh, part of the Niagara uh, River. And uh, I've, I have found that a number of people don't actually see it because they don't go that far north. This is taken from the U.S. side now. And there's that fragile little car. And there's the whirlpool. And then we go down a little bit, and for the first time we see the Whirlpool Rapids Bridge. That's the, the bridge there, and here it is again. And you can start to see some of the Niagara Falls, New York skyline. Now, another, another map. The water is flowing from Lake Erie and coming here, and this is the Horseshoe Falls, and this is the American Falls here. I'll talk about this little waterfall here in a little bit. This is uh, Niagara Falls, Ontario, and over here at the end of this Rainbow Bridge here is uh, Niagara Falls, um, New York. And these things that you see down in here, this is the Maid of the Mist, uh, that will be going up to the uh, to the waterfall. Um, we are here on the, um, the uh, that's a rainbow bridge. I'm, I have to look at these some sometimes and and see. But the fact that the American Falls was under it, it has to be the rainbow bridge. I was going to give you a different name, and that is the Rainbow Bridge. A better idea of seeing the, uh, the symmetry and the beauty of that bridge itself. Okay, now we're going to see a few of the American Falls. Now, the American Falls are 184 feet high. They're 1,075 feet wide. Um, and um, this little waterfall right, right here is a separate waterfall. This is a little island here. And um, that is Bridal Veil Falls. And you can actually see it separate, especially when you go out on the Maid of the Mist. But we are shooting from the Canadian side here to see these things. Um, I said we were going to stay on the Canadian side, and then I'll tell you when we go over. And there's a beautiful shot of the American Falls with little bridal veil over to our right. An earlier time, <laughs> a little silhouette and so forth in there. And down below is one of the Maid of the Mist. It's going on up, and it'll go right on up to the Horseshoe Falls. And uh, we'll, we'll do it, but it's got a lot of spray and everything else as you make your way up uh, through there. Now, remember, we're still on the uh, Canadian side at this point, and here is some of the terrace planning on that side. And then at this point, uh, the uh, beds of flowers and so forth, really uh, quite, quite nice. This is another shot of the American Falls, and please notice the rainbow. And that is indeed Rainbow Bridge there. And then we go to the Horseshoe Falls. Now the Horseshoe Falls are also known as the Canadian Falls. They're 177 uh, feet high with a crest of 2,215 feet. That's a big waterfall. In the last 1,200 years, the falls have moved about seven miles upstream towards Lake Erie. And that, that continues, and here is right smack at the lip of it. 
Now I want to um, read to you what Thomas More, the Irish poet, uh, had to say about these, this, these waterfalls. He visited here in 1804. Uh, this is the man who wrote all those endearing young charms, it's one of the Irish songs. And he says, I have seen the falls and them all rapture and amazement. I felt as if approaching the very residence of the deity. Oh, bring the atheist here and he cannot return an atheist. And then he says, it is impossible by pen or pencil to convey even a faint idea of their magnificence. And you can see, uh, you stand there and it mesmerizes you. <laughs> and you have trouble pulling yourself away from, from all this beautiful moving water. See, the normal flow is 977,000 gallons per second. And it's reduced at night to about 751,000, and that is for power generation. And yes, I've been up there in the wintertime. I've never seen the ice bridge. I've heard all about it. But I do have some pictures uh, with snow on the ground and the Great Falls in the background. Another man was here uh, looking at these falls, Charles Dickens. And he said, Niagara was at once stamped upon my heart, an image of beauty, to remain there changeless and indelible until its pulses cease to beat forever. Just a wonderful place. You see, I got sort of mesmerized there too and couldn't get away. And uh, here are the American Falls down here, a little bridal veil there, and here is the start of the Canadian Falls, and here is one of the Maid of the Mist. See, there's not just one Maid of the Mist, there are a number of them, and they operate from both the Canadian side and the um, U.S. side. I'm leaving our trip on it to, to a little uh, later, but here's one with a rainbow and the Maid of the Mist uh, down be below as it comes into the horseshoe. Believe me, you can't take much in the way of pictures when you're in front of that horseshoe. There's so much mist, uh, your lenses get um, fogged up um, almost immediately. But it is a place to go. It is something out of this world. Here's a little old Maid of the Mist now. It's past the American Falls. It's already got its, uh, uh, its fog from there. Now it has a little time to recover, and then it will come up into here and swing that way. So we're going to leave the falls for a little while, and we're going to, going to go on down um, towards um, uh, Old Fort um, Erie, and we're passing uh, an island called, um, oh, what is the name of this island? It's, um, it's between uh, Buffalo, New York, and Fort Erie, Ontario. Um, but this one, uh, the island splits um, the, um, the river. And uh, we get on down to old Fort, not Fort Erie. This is below the, um, the bridge that goes across uh, from Buffalo to um, Ontario. And Old Fort Erie is in Ontario, and it was built in 1764, but it was destroyed in an 1802 storm. Uh, it has never been opened <laughs> when I have been there, uh, so these pictures are all from, from the outside. Uh, it was re the rebuilding, and they were actually were doing it, but it was not complete in 1812 when the war started, but it was involved in that war somewhat, somewhat. And we're, we're still at the uh, fort, and then there should be a monument. Oh, this is a view out to... Uh, the Niagara River with a strange building out in there. That's the U.S. across, across the way. And if the, if the fort were open, you would go up that um, crosswalk uh, to get into it. Maybe the next time I get up there, it'll be open. I don't know. I don't count on it. 
And here is a, a monument as we uh, uh, make our move now to go across to uh, the U.S. Uh, see, we, we have come all the way down, down here, down through uh, these uh, bridges, and uh, now we're going to go over to Fort Erie and make our way all the way down through here, here to, uh, uh, on the American side. But I wanted you to see Niagara on the lake from the Canadian side one more time before we go out uh, to it. So this is taken from Canada, and then the rest then will be taken from uh, that side, <laughs> the American side. That's uh, one view of, of a, a lighthouse over there by the fort. And here is standing right in front of that lighthouse. Okay, now we are, we are going up this way and in through this gate to get into Old Fort Niagara. Here are the dates. 1679, it was French. 1759, British. 1796, United States. It was recaptured by the British in 1813 with return to U.S. in 1815. And my wife is just about to step into the entrance uh, gate there um, as we make our way into the fort. There's the 1759, and this is when the British took over. And uh, we're going up to the North Redoubt, and that dates back to 1770. One and this is all part of it. Um, this a uh, couple of buildings, and that's Lake Ontario that you see out there. This is the North Redoubt here, mainly that uh, part of it there. Lake Ontario. There's one of the, one of the cannons, um, ready, set. <laughs> and then the three flags um, um, of uh, French, uh, British, and American. And that uh, building over there is called the castle, or more correctly, the French castle. And uh, that has the touches of France on it. Some more of the cannons as we make our way all around. And this is a close-up of the North Redoubt, and that is Lake Ontario out there. And inside there, here are some of the bunks. They don't look very comfortable, but I suppose they serve the purpose. And looking out to one of the windows, you see those three, three flags out there. And there is the, the French castle over there. Now we'll talk about this, uh, this cross and this when we get outside. Well, we're all outside. So that is the Millet Cross. That dates back to 1926. The Millet Cross commemorates when this fort was Deaninville, and in the winter of 1687 to 88, the French garrison was reduced by disease and starvation from 100 to 12 survivors. That's all, and that Millet Cross commemorates that not very pleasant event. And then this memorial is in honor of two negotiators, Rush and Baggett. And the negotiations was to limit the warships on Lake Erie. And so these two negotiators are some of the reasons for a 4,000 mile unfortified border between the United States and Canada, unparalleled in the world. Now, it's about 27 miles across Lake Ontario to the north to get to Toronto. It's, it's over in this area. On a clear day, you can see some, you can see it better at night, on a clear night. 
And then we're going up to um, the French castle. <laughs> kind of interesting dormer windows. <laughs> uh, I never saw them quite like that, but anyhow. And then I, I will have a number of views on the inside of here. This is probably the office's uh, uh, dining or mess or whatever you want to want to call it. That's the office's room, and here's a little chapel. It's a, I, my notes indicate that this was the dining room for the offices, but I can't believe enlisted men were allowed those kind of chairs in that other one. And then here is one of the beds. It's a full poster and drapes on it in a, in a fighting area. Uh, it's a little beyond me. And up on the top floor, this is the ballroom. Now, coming outside of uh, that building is the bakery building. Uh, see, they kept, uh, they kept a lot of the needs for fire, for stuff like that, for open fires, away from the, the main buildings. And this is the bakery on the right and the, um, the uh, castle on the left. And, and here again, the castle and so forth. Now, th this is the, the bakery building here. And that cannon is directed to Niagara on the lake, uh, on, uh, on the Canadian side. And here was an old trading post here. Uh, and you couldn't buy anything in there at this time. And then I'd never seen one of these before. This was a place where they, they uh, this is called a hot shot furnace, and they would heat up um, material like cannon balls and so forth and fire them hot. It's a weird way to go as far as I'm concerned. And uh, now we're going on down. See, we were up there and we're coming on, on down actually right onto this area right in here. Uh, Goat Island comes out. This is Goat Island here. And we're going to go right smack out to the edge of this. And then later we will go use this tower to come on the Maid of the Mist. So as we get to Goat Island, we've just parked our car the other side of this arch. And we see this stature, and it's all polished like kids have been up on there to have their picture taken. I didn't know anything about the man, Nik Nikola Tesla. Uh, so I looked him up, and he is the inventor of the alternating current motor, the one that actually made it possible to use electricity. He was also the, uh, he uh, has the um, patent on the inventions of the radio, not Marconi. The Supreme Court ruled that this man, Tesla, got the pattern. He's sort of the forgotten father of technology, a brilliant, brilliant man. And I was glad I um, had the um, uh, stature to jog me into going and finding out something about uh, the man. So we go out on Goat Island, and there's the American Falls. And while I have it, I'm going back to Thomas More again. Remember, he visited in 1804. I pity the man who can coldly sit down to write a description of these ineffable wonders. Much more do I pity him who can submit them to the measurement of gallons and yards. It is impossible by pen or pencil to convey even a faint idea of their magnificence. Painting is lifeless, and the most burning words of poetry have all been lavished upon inferior and ordinary subjects. We must have new combinations of language to describe the falls of Niagara. See the people here? You can get that close to this waterfall. Magnificent thing. And we're out on Terrapin Point now, and you can look at both the uh, Canadian Falls and the American Falls from that point. 
Now this, this is the Canadian Falls horseshoe coming around here. And those are the rapids coming down to uh, the Canadian Falls, the Horseshoe Falls. Remember, the river has been split, and now it comes. And uh, down here is a maid of the mist. Those people are getting wet at this point. This is the little stream here. The main part of the river that is feeding the American Falls is going there, but this little stream comes down here and becomes Bridal Veil Falls. So you walk across a little island to get to this uh, picture. And we're looking down below, and there's some activity down here. As you can see, some people there, and they can go down there uh, and go through a tunnel to really get wet if you want to. And some people do. And looking uh, across, you see a balloon, an advertising balloon there. We're still out on Terrapin Point. Now later we will go over to this tower and uh, go down it to the river to get the Maid of the Mist. And that's the Rainbow Bridge right behind it. And here comes one of the Maid of the Mist by American Falls while we're there. Now we're making our way over towards um, the place where we're going to get the Maid of the Mist beautiful flowers all the way through this whole um, scene of Niagara, is, uh, those gorgeous, gorgeous flowers. Now, I have this listed as four views from various points and times. There's the American Falls, but there is the Horseshoe Falls in the background. And then this has snow on it. And over to the right of the picture, you can see the spray up from the Horseshoe Falls. A lot of snow. Still the American Falls. And that is um, Niagara Falls, Ontario in the background with the American Falls across here and back in here, the Canadian uh, Horseshoe Falls. And now we're going to go on the Maid of the Mist excursion. This is an interesting adventure with plenty of spray and lots of the sound of rushing water. We took our trip from the American side and thus were not as crowded. The Canadian boats were jammed with passengers. Now what President Roosevelt, when he went here, said, he, had, he quoted Mark Twain, so I didn't have to quote Mark Twain. Roosevelt, Mark Twain simply wrote, Niagara Falls is one of the finest structures in the known world. Any vantage point can confirm Twain's view, but the most vivid experience involves the Maid of the Mist boat ride. Mark Twain called the ride the only way fully to realize the grandeur of the Great Falls of Niagara. And I'm sure Theodore Roosevelt would uh, agree with that, being the kind of guy that he was. But here's the one that we're going to go on, uh, and it will swing around, and we will catch it. And this is the river. I'm standing there waiting to get on it. We have come down the tower, and I'm lo looking towards Lake Ontario, and the river's flowing away from me. And there's a little shack there that the people, the, the boat ties up on the other side and they, they come through that shack to get uh, off and go on up. They furnish you with plastic stuff and you can keep it. As a matter of fact, I have mine at, at home. And here's where we are on the boat and making our way up. And there's that tower. We, wa we walked out on it. We walked out on it, and you could walk on through it and come out on here and take pictures, both upstream and downstream, but the elevator is on there. And then we waited right back in here, and where you saw the people getting off the boat uh, was uh, through that little shack. 
And here's little Bridalville Falls here, the Great American Falls. Actually, it's considered part of it, but I, I, I think it's neat that it is an island between there and actually a separate uh, waterfall. Now, as I said, you're not going to see too many, uh, <laughs> too many good pictures here because you're mostly got, got fog and spray and sometimes downright water right in your face and on top of your camera. So it's, uh, it's a little, uh, little tricky taking too much in the way of good stuff uh, here. But uh, I, tr I tried my best. And, and we're just at the American Falls. Now we're going over... Uh, by, the, by the horseshoe. See where that, where that boat is? We will be up there. Uh, and there you can't see anything. Um, we're, all, we're almost in, into it now. And the spray just plummets down and fogs up your uh, lens and before you can wipe it off and get it ba back again, oh man, it's, it's really, a, really an experience. We're real ha happy we did it. Uh, and there's the tower in the American Falls. Now, I just wanted to review just uh, with you. I, I don't have the Welland Canal in this, but there's the waterfalls right in here. And going the Rainbow Bridge, the, uh, the uh, Whirlpool Bridge, and this is the Whirlpool itself and swinging on around. Uh, there's the last bridge, and then on out to Lake Ontario. So this is sort of, let's put it as a closing review, uh, and we'll do it that way. Here's one of the ships of the, of the Welland Canal, and uh, remember that, and remember the grapes, and Niagara on the lake, beautiful Niagara on the lake. What a way to remember it with all that flowers in there. And old Fort George. And then the Brock Tower. And right by the Brock Tower, the Niagara River. And here I got some sumac and its autumn coloration to brighten up the, uh, the picture. And remember the floral clock. And little water lilies at the clock. And as I told you, you can't keep the electrical apparatus <laughs> out of the story of Niagara because it's very much a part of it. And a garden border at the horticultural school. And the Niagara River between the clock and the whirlpool. I don't know if I showed you this before, but I wanted you to see those high cliffs on the American side of the Niagara River right through here. There's our friend the aero car again. Um, a lot of people are scared of that, but uh, I've been over on it at least three times, and the, every ride was wonderful. It was really good. And there are the cables and the, uh, that you're depending on and the whirlpool down below as you go across that. And the beautiful Rainbow Bridge. And then the American Falls first. Good lighting here, beautiful, beautiful lighting. And then the American Falls with the Maid of the Mist coming in from the, the left. The Horseshoe Falls are Canadian Falls. And the American Falls and the Rainbow Bridge. A little, little suggestion of a rainbow there. And more of a suggestion here of a rainbow. And then, so we don't forget it, because I always used to forget it, Old Fort Erie. Uh, this last trip up there was the first time I ever went to Old Fort Erie. Now we'll switch over to the American side and we're at Old Fort Niagara. And this one I took from Canada so you would get a better idea uh, on it because for the 
for the position of everything, it's easier to take it from over there. And then this one from the Maid of the Mist of the uh, Magnificent Waterfalls. And see this, um, uh, you see people up on the top, but down in here is where those people were that had come through that cave uh, to see, it's called the Cave of the Winds uh, excursion, I think. Then the American Falls with Bridal Veil and so forth. And that is the end of our little trip up into the Niagara area, only five hours away. Thank you.